This week on Latter-day News. Hundreds of members lose their homes to a raging inferno in Oregon. And what a young boy from the Ukraine did with advice from the prophet 10 years ago. Many times I felt that we were singing with angels. Finally, get your Tabernacle Choir fix as we expect the famous musical group will be missing in action during conference. But first, the headlines. President Nelson expressed in a social post that going to see his grandbabies in the hospital is an event that brings him unspeakable joy. Although the visits are now virtual outings, he said he was grateful that not even a pandemic can stop the Lord from embracing us. Boy, the manager at Rogue Valley Mobile Village is saying that he's got a bunch of tenants that can't walk from my transport bed. Members of the Bear Creek Ward sprang into action to help over 2,000 families with damaged or destroyed homes. 356 ward members were displaced by the Almeda fire that ravaged four cities in Oregon. In furtherance of this, we of the First Presidency and the Council of the Twelve Apostles now issue a proclamation to the Church and to the world. Announced in conference in 1995, the family, a proclamation to the world, continues to carry its message throughout the world. Over the last 25 years, the proclamation has made visits to the United Nations with Relief Society President Sister Bingham and the Vatican with President Irene. And liftoff. As the countdown to Mars continues, the perseverance of humanity launching the next generation of robotic explorers to the Red Planet. Michelle Amos of NASA misses seeing her rover placed on Mars to serve a mission with her husband, president of the Louisiana Baton Rouge Mission. Sister Amos mentioned that she saw the launch on NASA Live, but it was a little different than being with her team at the Kennedy Center. Featured in the Friend magazine over 10 years ago, Danil Kilabach told readers of his experience when the prophet told him he would be a good missionary. Years later, he made the difficult decision to choose between missionary service or his dream to serve his country in the military. Today, he is Elder Kilimbach in the Ukraine Dnipro mission. You must search the word of God. And finally, general conference sessions will once again be closed to the public, but stream live on October 3rd and 4th with a women's session for sisters 11 and up on Saturday evening. View conference online, on mobile apps, KSL television, or listen on the radio or smart speakers. And that's the headlines. This week's temple updates includes the announcements of two temple groundbreakings. The Koban Guatemala Temple breaks ground next month and the Okinawa Japan Temple groundbreaking will happen in December of this year. Finally, updates for temples making good progress. The Pocatello Idaho Temple adds trees next to the ascending staircase that leads up to the temple. And the Quito Ecuador Temple's stone cladding climbs over the upper walls surrounding the tower. And now, Latter-day News ends with a cinematic gift to those that are missing the music of the Tabernacle Choir this general conference. Every Sunday, 360 voices come together to sing, to praise, to inspire. To become one of those voices, well, it's hard, but it's worth it. We can once again expect October Conference to favor us with previously recorded music from the Tabernacle Choir due to the pandemic. For a different choir experience, watch the movie Singing with Angels based on true events. 
Years ago, a baby girl was born. It was too early for her to come. You know, there's a lot in life that we don't understand. But that's why we can trust in God. He has the best perspective. Angels, all of you. Your music saved my life. I feel a hope. Maybe that means there is a God. Singing with Angels focuses on one woman's decision to join the Tabernacle Choir and how it strengthened her through her challenges. Stream it now on Living Scriptures. Come back every Friday for more Latter-day News.